Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Actual Magician Explains. In this episode I'm going to be covering the history and process of initiation, particularly as it's used in the Western esoteric industry system that I teach and within the history of the occult and magical orders such as the Golden Dawn and the life and magic of notorious occultist Alistair Crowley. In its simplest term, initiation means to begin. So you have already initiated this video and you are initiating yourself into knowledge that might be new to you. It means to begin to learn or to begin to experience a different state of awareness, particularly in the Western Esoteric Industry System. One of the main concepts of initiation is metanoia, which is the Greek for a particular form of a loss of forgetfulness. So therefore we are losing our forgetfulness of our natural initiated magical state of unity with all things rather than gaining something. In the magical initiation system I liken it to the knowledge and experience being used to plan our escape into reality as opposed to being just information or grades of initiation that we use to paper the cell that we are currently trapped inside. In order to look at initiation in this way and to know how are we initiated, how do we become initiated, what is the difference between an initiate and anybody else, we're going to look at the history of initiation and we're going to start with the magical order or the society of the Golden Dawn, which was formed in 1888. What we are currently looking at is the knowledge lectures of the Golden Dawn as they appeared in the original cipher manuscript that was the foundation of that order. Now, it is still debated as to the author of the manuscript, but it is likely that it was the Freemason Kenneth Mackenzie, and it was discovered, in a sense, by William W. Westcott, one of the three founders of the Golden Dawn. What we're looking at is the original coded version of the Tarot Lecture, and this forms the basis of the initiation system as well. As through correspondence, the tarot is used, as we will come to see, in the initiation system. We can see that the Golden Dawn, when it was formed in 1888 as the Isis Urania Temple, had the mythical Fraulein Sprengel as its first member who had achieved the magical grade of five equals six, which we will look at on the Tree of Life. But also that we have W.W. W. Woodman, W.W. Uh, w. W., uh, Westcott and uh, McGregor Mathers up there at the top who was um, expelled um, by the Second Order. The Golden Dawn used a system of initiation based on the Tree of Life and the Kabbalah, and in particular they used the Kirka version of the Tree of Life that we can see on the screen at the moment. And here we have the paths being joined in a very particular way. But the real basis of the initiation system within the Golden Dawn and later orders that have adopted this method... For example, it was actually used prior to the Golden Dawn within the SRIA, a Freemasonic order from which the three members of the Golden Dawn, the founder members, originally came. We can trace this grade system back to the uh, Golden and Rosy Cross, the Brothers of the Golden and Rosy Cross in Germany, in the mid-1700s, and it is likely that this system was brought into the Golden Dawn via the research of Kenneth Mackenzie. In this principal plan from the Rose and Golden Cross Order from 1767, we can see that the order, which was based on the teachings of alchemy, 
was broken down into grades that go from number nine to number one, but are also ordered in their sequential order number one to number nine, which is how the Golden Dawn came by the layout of five equals six or six equals five, ten equals one for their magical progress. But we can see in this diagram that we start with the junior, the theoricus, practicus, philosophus, adeptus minor, adeptus major, adeptus um, exempti, and the magister and magi, which become the magus and magister templi, or master of the temple, within the golden dawn order itself. But the idea of a structured ascent of consciousness from our basic state as a human being to an initiated state of divine union is not new to the Golden Dawn. The idea of a ladder or a set of grades of ascent is fairly common within a lot of systems, in particular a lot of systems of Christian mysticism. So we have this concept of a ladder of grades, which literally means steps of initiation that bring us from a sleeping state into a state of higher awakening. And in the Western esoteric initiatory system, this is broken down into 10 grades or 10 steps. And we can see, for example, in the life of Aleister Crowley, that we have his key initiations from when he was first initiated into the Golden Dawn in 1898 to his claiming of the grade of Ipsissimus at the top of the Tree of Life in 1921. And we can see how these grades underpin his other activities. For example, the reception of Liber Al, the Book of the Law, in Cairo in 1904, to his experiences leading to the Vision and the Voice in 1900 and 1909, in addition to all of the magical works that he wrote, beginning with his collection of poetry in 1898, all the way through magic in theory and practice, all the way through to the Book of Thoth in 1944. Something that was quite late in his work, all the way prior to his death in 1947. So, what is the aim of initiation? Well, the aim of initiation is to awaken ourselves into a more consistent, comprehensive and congruent state of awareness to truth or reality itself. That is to say that we have a consistent state of awareness that is congruent to the truth of what is actually the case and that it is comprehensive in the sense of being able to model and explain all aspects of our relationship with the universe itself. This is why we can tell what grade of initiation that somebody is working through because of the questions that they ask. The universe is a state of inquiry. It is inquiring into its own existence through action, and that is reflected in the microcosm, as above, so below, as within, so without, and so forth, that because we are part of that system of inquiry, our questions as they arise are both part of our state, arise from our state, and guide us towards the challenges of answering those questions through our experience and through a graduated state of awareness that we map onto the tree of life, possibly because we have 10 digits and work to that sort of system. And this leads to a more comprehensive, consistent and congruent state of awareness. So it is really important that we don't look at the grades as accomplishments. Perhaps we do if we are working within each grade within Malkuth or Yesod on the Tree of Life within our psyche. We see these as attainments, almost like receiving certifications and badges and recognition for our state when in fact our state hasn't changed at all. We've just added more information 
into our present state, and this is not really what actual initiation is. So when we take a look at the Tree of Life, we can see that we have the 10 sephiroth, or grades of awareness, both coming down the tree and going up the tree. We have the paths that connect them. Conveniently, there are 22 of them, and these relate and correspond to the letters of the Hebrew alphabet and also the tarot cards themselves. And so we can in effect, illustrate the challenges, the opportunities, the resources that we need, and the lessons that we learn up the tree of life through the paths that connect the Sephiroth, connect the grades, connect the states of awareness, which in themselves are inexpressible because they are states of awareness and experiences. They're not the descriptions of them that follow. As Umberto Eco said, the truth is brief, the rest is merely commentary. So the paths are our best lesson for explaining and experiencing the grades themselves. And this is why I teach tarot, is because we then have a language by which we can refer to our experiences and clamber up the tree of life to the top. So here we see a tree of life and at the bottom we can see that what I've done with this particular tree is I've briefly outlined the state of the grades and also illustrated the paths between them with the tarot cards and I've tried to select out perhaps one of the key symbols that Wade had put into the tarot to match the tree of life and the grades and the narrative through ritual and initiation of our ascent of the tree of life. And here we can see, for example, that the blast of the trumpet from the last judgment card comes between Practicus and Zelator, and the path of the moon leads up to Philosophus. So you can imagine perhaps that when we start our work, we start at the bottom as a neophyte, we then become a zealot, or this is someone who works. And nowadays, I don't think there are any real neophytes left. Basically, that is someone who doesn't know that they want to look at the initiation system, that they want to make progress in magic, the occult, their spiritual path, and so forth. And so they are new to it, a neophyte, when they first come to it. But because of the amount of information that's out there these days, anyone can rapidly progress from a neophyte to a zealotor just at the click of a mouse button. So a zealotor is somebody who is working, someone who is working on themselves, somebody who is acquiring new information, trying out lots of different things. And the problem is, is that we can be stuck as a zealotor for the rest of our lives. We can just become a better and better zealotor, someone more knowledgeable, someone more experienced, but someone whose fundamental state of awareness, consciousness, beingness, however you want to describe it, has not fundamentally shifted. And it is the fundamental shift of awareness that really marks our progression through the tree of life itself. So when we commence as a zealotor, we have three potential paths open to us. And one of the issues with the tree of life as a map is it's not necessarily linear or sequential. We have lots of options open to us at any given stage. And so it's possible to attain attain or shift your state of awareness from one grade to another, but not leave behind the previous grades. And so as a map, it's not necessarily the most rigorous, simple, straightforward map to apply, but it does give us a general sense of the territory that we are moving through as we make our ascent up the tree of life and through our own spiritual, mystical progress. So taking a quick look at the grades at the bottom of the tree of life, we can see that we begin as a neophyte. This is someone who is new to occult studies, new to Western esotericism, 
new to self-development or their spiritual path or their mystical experience. And the Zelator is somebody who begins to question the nature of their own identity or experience and believes that there is something more to the world than their current experience. And in a sense, we remain a Zelator. In a sense, we quit not Malkuth, the lowest of the Sephira on the Tree of Life, because we are constantly questioning our current state in order to move us along the journey. So a Zelator is somebody who works, is someone who is zealous about their work, and we often see a neophyte turn into a zealotor through the process of their work and their experiences, and they begin to have magical experience through ritual, through ceremony, through meditation, through whatever form of work that they choose to do. And quite often the zealotor may be doing a lot of different types of work, trying, experimenting with a lot of different sorts of paths because they're trying to find their way, they're trying to answer their calling, they're trying to engage and see the world as it actually is. And we can see that represented by the three paths that come into Zelator and the particular symbols out of those paths that I've honed in on on the diagram. It's the calling of the trumpet of the last judgment. The Zelator is someone who feels a calling, feels that they haven't found their their path, their real and true life. On the other side, we have the path of the moon between the two dogs where the crayfish is trying to follow the path, but it's mysterious, it's enigmatic. They might be somehow frightened about the changes that they might undergo or be asked to undergo from their own work. And in the middle, we have the world dancing in a veil where the Zelotoy is trying to see Isis unveil, trying to see reality as it actually is under the covers. Now, one of the challenges that we have with each grade is that we can get stuck inside it and bring the rest of the tree down into that grade. So a Zelotor may feel as if they have become an Adeptus Minor, they have crossed the abyss, they are a master of the temple and all of these other things. But in effect, they have brought those grades or their understanding or appreciation of what those grades might be into their state of existence as a Zelator. And this can happen in each of the grades. In effect, each grade has an entire tree of life within it, and each of the Sephiroth within each of those trees has a tree of life and so forth. It's called the orchard in Kabbalistic studies, where the tree has trees within it. And so a Zelator is somebody who is not necessarily changing their state, but is using their teaching and experience to paper the walls of their cell rather than recognising that it's actually an escape plan to get them out of the cell in which they currently are. Now, as we go up the tree, we can see that there are different challenges as we go up the tree and one of the things that we can tell in terms of a grade is the questions that people are asking. So somebody who wants to know what to do next or whether the, what they're doing is right or what is the way to the next grade by what they do is still actually in a zealotor because they are asking what action they can take, what things that they can do, what knowledge they've got to get, what tests they have to pass in order to proceed to another grade. When in fact, that's all within the world of a zealotor because it's all work that one can do. Whereas the Theoricus, the next major grade of the tree of life that corresponds to Yesod, as I've said, is one who watches. This is a fundamental and distinct shift of awareness, consciousness. It's more congruent, it's more consistent, it's more comprehensive than the state of mind you go about as a zealot or with. 
So the Theoricus is somebody who now has the uh, water of the star and the light of the sun guiding them, and the angel of temperance looking down at them through their connection to Tifreth in the tree of life. So in a sense, they're beginning to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps into this higher grade. And it's something that one can be initiated into by somebody else, but it is not something that one can self-initiate into because you're always within yourself. You cannot escape, to begin with, your own identity and state of awareness. So it has to be somebody else who lifts you out of that. As it said in some of the Gnostic teaching, one by one we take them out of the world And the world, of course, is the tarot card down at the bottom of the Tree of Life. So we can see on the Tree of Life as well that we have the two side pillars and we have grades of practicus and philosophers on either side. The practicus is one who practices and the philosophers is one who waits. Quite often there are long waiting periods that can last many, many years as one works on accomplishing the final work of each of the grades in order to build one's path up the tree of life and cleave, adhere to the higher grades as one tries to lift oneself up out of the lower grades while still also trying to keep in balance those lower grades through the higher states that one might be progressing through. And ultimately the aim of this is the psissimus, the own very self, but that is the very self of the universe itself, and so it is very difficult to talk about that grade. So in effect, we may not know where we are going to, but we certainly know the limits of where we are. We really have to wake up out of our happy, content sleep in order to wake up into each of the next grades. Because at heart, the human biological machine, the state of our own self-identity is quite contracted, is isolated, is non-associated with reality itself. And it's an illusionary state. It's what the Guru Dafrijan called Narcissus. It's a state of identity that is merely a reflection, but one we believe is something other than ourselves. We can see, in fact, how Arthur Edward Waite, uh, with the artwork of Pamela Common Smith, encoded the journey of the Tree of Life into the tarot cards, into the major arcana, And we can see this more clearly in his work 10 years later with the Wade Trinic deck or set of images at least that were tarot images used to illustrate and he called them the great symbols of the paths. He was not that interested in the minor arcana or the court cards. He was only interested in the teaching of the major arcana as a spiritual path leading upwards through the tree of life. We can see, for example, in the fall card that we have the white rose and the white sun of Ketha, Ipsissimus, one's very own self, and the fall is looking up that path, ready to complete the journey over the abyss, and he is at the top of the mountain that symbolizes the initiation system. In a sense, we can also see this teaching with the two pillars being balanced by the duality of the world card, where the world card is our first experience of the initiatory system. We encounter the initiation system at our own level as we begin. It's something that we learn, it's something that we practice, it's something that we do. It's less about our state of awareness as opposed to our experimentation with the world as it may be. But we can always sense that something is calling us to a new state of being. The trumpet call of the judgment card is similar to the call of the angels that awaken Jacob from his sleep and provide us the image of Jacob's ladder. This is a 
image that is also used within alchemical teachings and it is in effect laid down when we reach, for example, the final page of the mutus liber, the alchemical sequence of images that has no words but ends with the ladder being laid down because we have taken the ladder to the top of the tree of life. And in effect, the Last Judgment card also shows the secret of the journey in the fact that the three characters at the foreground are making the signs of L, V and X, which spells out the Latin for lux or light, because we are going to take the journey from the coffin of life as we know it into the new life of the mystical or spiritual journey. We can see as well how the tarot cards show the paths on the tree of life. They're actually, to some extent, although Pamela Coleman Smith's artwork is not necessarily consistent, there are indications that we have the paths hidden on the tree of life. And we can now see as well where the star is pouring the waters from the right-hand pillar of the Tree of Life that we see to the right of the diagram, and she's pouring it from the grade of Philosophus down to the grade of Theoricus, from one who waits to one who watches. Whilst this may not be consistent in the uh, Waite-Smith tarot, it is certainly more consistent in the Waite-Trinic tarot, in our own order of Everlasting Day tarot, and also in a tarot that, again, artist Janine Hall developed for us based on notes that we discovered in the archives of the Golden Dawn from an uh, initiate called Meekin, and we developed 22 images from his description of these cards. And when placed on the Tree of Life, we can see, for example, that they have nice overlaps from the artistic development that Janine Hall had put to these cards so that we can see, for example, down at Malkuth, we are still working in the world of symbols, that we have a lot of symbology there. But there is the gate open to a higher state. And then that overlaps with the moon card. And then from the moon, we have the torch of the Zelator being lit um, from down below. And that in effect, makes the spiritual egg above the rose cross that then overlaps with Tifereth. And when we place that onto the entire tree of life and the cards, we have the pyramid of fire that is now having an alchemical effect on the egg that is within it. And we have the scales of justice that you can make out with the light of the hermit balancing and refining the light in the middle of the Tree of Life. These cards are available from us, and I'll put a link in the description below, but I would definitely recommend them because they are as close to the initiatory system of the Golden Dawn, even closer than the descriptions by the Golden Dawn members themselves of the cards that have become, in effect, the de facto Golden Dawn Tarot. So where does this leave us? What is initiation? How are we initiated? Well, I believe that initiation means to begin, and it means to begin the process of remembering our loss of forgetfulness. That, in effect, we are recalling ourselves to our own individual unique state within the relationship to the universe that we have. And this is something that, to some extent, is based on our own work and experience and happens within ourself, but to some extent also has to be engendered, inculcated, developed by those outsiders. And so it is possible to self-dedicate oneself, self-consecrate oneself, self-oath oneself, make a vow and so forth, but initiation is something separate. Initiation is often something that must be done from outside of ourselves by somebody else in order to initiate the work that starts the next state. And so it's always important 
to be working with people who can initiate your awareness and get you to question more, get you to think more, get you to try more in order to help develop your answer to your own questions and to guide you in that way. Within Magical Orders, we have initiation rituals, which are there to, in part, initiate you into the group and share a common body of experience and knowledge within the group, one of the classical definitions of initiation. And also, to some extent, they are there to impart the teaching and experience in a embodied, immersive way that is required for that particular grade work. And to some extent as well, particularly those initiation rituals on the middle pillar of the Tree of Life, they can to some extent catalyze the necessary experience required to make that fundamental shift of awareness and consciousness that is more comprehensive, congruent and consistent outside of the previous state of awareness, like we see in the Last Judgment card, entering into a new life that is still within your own life, but is a new way of seeing things. If an initiation ritual works, then it will, to some extent, either catalyze or introduce you to this new state of awareness. And from that will come new questions, new experiences, new ways of looking at things. And more importantly, it will collapse a lot of the questions that you had prior to that initiation, which to some extent is how we can tell what grade somebody has progressed into is by the questions that they still are asking and we are still asking about our relationship to the universe. And it's not so much the particular questions, there's no set list for those, but there is a theme or a state of awareness that is implied by those questions and the way in which they're asked and the way in which they feel to that person that really indicate from which grade they they are asking those questions out of. So you can initiate yourself to some extent from neophyte to zealotor by merely doing the work, by starting the work, by asking questions, by experimenting with ritual or any occult esoteric practice. But there is no necessary singular path for anyone within this system itself. The manner in which you do it may be unique to you, your background, your age, your interests and so forth. And to some extent you may have to wait for that initiation to occur. For example, there's a, in some traditions there's a mandatory year and a day waiting period um, it's a bit like the martial arts films where the applicant is refused entry to the martial arts temple and then spends all of their time sweeping the leaves outside as the seasons pass and they're never admitted. But then eventually they are admitted because they have shown their commitment to this singular path that is required and the teachers know that it's required if you're going to benefit or make progress within this particular system. It has to be entirely committed. I was initiated when I was 18 and I had to wait um, two years in effect. Um, I first inquired when I was 16 and because it was a Gardnerian initiation, I had to wait until I was 18. And to some extent, it was a traditional initiation in the sense of Gardnerian practice at the time. The high priestess had been initiated by the priest of that coven, who'd been initiated by Patricia Crowther, who of course had been initiated by Gerald Gardner. So I followed that traditional line through my own Book of Shadows, which was handwritten from their copy. But there's not necessarily a tradition in a lot of occult orders, and neither do they need to necessarily show contact with previous entities or teachers of the past in order to initiate you. 
it's far more important that they are aware of the nature of initiation itself and the fact that they're not just giving you a award, grade, name or certificate without you fundamentally changing your, your state. And this is why initiation has to be done so carefully, so uh, precisely, because it's important that the consequences of each of the initiations is built in to your experience and preparedness and your resources so that you can deal with the initiation when it happens. Because if it doesn't fundamentally upturn your entire existence, then in my view, it's certainly not one of the grade initiations, one of the fundamental 10 stages that we can identify through the map of the tree of life. And we can identify that pattern in any of the great teachers. Um, we have, for example, the experience of Daphri John, of Bernadette Roberts, of Irina Tweedy, even Eckhart and other occultists and mystics of the past, we can literally identify each of their great experiences where they recorded it at least uh, in terms of the Tree of Life, which we do in the book called The Magister, which Charlotte Louise and I are currently working on reworking for republication. So I hope that's given you some brief introduction to the initiation system within the Western Esoteric Industry System particularly as I teach it, and as far as I understand the history of the grade system itself. There's obviously a lot more to it than that, and we would invite you into the Crucible Club for perhaps eventual work within the Order of Everlasting Day if you're interested in the way that we approach things. So thank you again, and I will depart with the words that we use with our departure to fellow members of the Order which is the worker is hidden in the workshop. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video when we're going to be discussing what does a magical order actually teach. Thank you, and bye for now.